Now, real objects don't tend to move at a constant speed or a constant velocity for very long. In actual fact, it's always changing. And if we were to look at a distance time graph, so we've got our distance measured in metres and our time measured in seconds, if we were to maybe plot uh, real data, we might get a line like this that has lots of curves on it. And all that means is that over time, we've got a changing or variable speed. But imagine we wanted to work out the speed at a certain point, and you've been given some data and you want to know the speed at this particular time. Well, the speed is still going to be equal to the gradient of that line. Remembering, of course, that the gradient or the slope of that line tells us the rate at which the distance is changing per second, therefore its speed. So to work this out, what we want to do is work at the gradient of this part here. But it's something that we can't work out directly. So instead, what we need to do is take a ruler, and we then need to draw a tangent to the curve. So this is the kind of thing you might have done in mathematics. So this is very much a straight line that just meets that curve at the same point. Now this is where it's really down to you to judge it by eye. I'd say that here that's a bit too shallow, uh, that's probably a bit too steep, so somewhere in the middle is going to be about right. So I'm going to say about there. Once I've got the line I'm going to use, I probably should be using a pencil if I'm drawing a graph, but I'm just going to use the pen for this video and I'm going to draw a nice long tangent to that part of the graph. Once I've got this, I can then just work out the gradient in the usual way. Remembering, of course, that the gradient is equal to the change in y value divided by the change in x value. And the best way to take your values of x and y is to pick two points on this line. I'm actually going to draw a big triangle to show this as well. So if I draw a triangle onto that line that I drew, this mean, means it's easier when it comes to working at your coordinates both at the start and the end. So you take your coordinates, you read the data off the graph, and then you just look at the change in y value divided by the change in x value, and that's equal to your gradient. And this in, is then equal to the speed of the object at that instantaneous time. So that's all there is to it, really. Um, it's just a kind of a test of your mathematical skills and your ability to read data off a graph. And also, I suppose, understanding, of course, that uh, at any point, the slope of a distance time graph is equal to the speed of that object.